All right. Well, thank you, Justin, for hopping on this call with me. I super, super appreciate it. This is part of our show called the Amplify REI Show, where we get to talk to rockstar investors that are just completely crushing it in their markets. Um, so thanks, Justin, for hopping on. I really appreciate it, man. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs>Awesome. So out of Myrtle Beach, um, joining us today, uh, Justin, I would just let's just throw it back right from the beginning. What got you into real estate investing? And really, let's dive into that first deal that like you must have sunk your teeth into. You're like, man, I got to I got to do more of this. Yeah. So um, I was working extremely hard. So as they say, overworked and and I felt like I was underpaid. I made pretty good pretty good money, but it's never enough uh, working for somebody else. Mm-hmm. And I was doing residential construction for a class A builder. We were building a lot of houses and doing a lot of remodels for okay. a real estate investor who was doing fix and flips and new construction. Okay, so was, you know, showing up for work every day, and then he would come on the job site just to check things out, and it was like, wait a minute. I'm, I'm in the wrong shoes here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's that guy doing? <laughs> yeah. It's like, <laughs> I'm doing all the work, but he's making all the money. So, um, so I, I went to uh, the grand university of YouTube and started searching, you know, real estate investing. And initially um, I, I wasn't familiar with wholesale, mm-hmm. uh, wholesaling properties or any of that. I just knew what all I knew was what I seen through him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I didn't really ask him a lot of questions initially and, and things of that nature. Of course, after I started getting educated, then every time he would come around, I would try to put the handcuffs on him. Yeah. And, yeah. And drill down. Yeah. Take so, um, but, but nevertheless, uh, I went to the university of YouTube, started watching videos and got into, um, creative real estate investing, uh, cool. creative finance strategies. Love and, it. And the whole buy with no money down, no credit, you know, no bank loans, none of that was uh, what, you know, was the hook that, that reeled me in. So we did our first, my wife, and when I say we, it's my wife and I. Um, right. Yeah, we do. We run the business together. Um, we went to a, I think we went to a, a one day uh, seminar, real estate investing seminar. And then we went to a three day, you know, kind of a training for uh creative finance strategies and it was typically all it was it was mostly based around subject to deal mm-hmm. structuring as opposed to other creative deals yeah. um strategies so we, we came back from that three-day seminar and within two weeks we had a contract for a subject to deal nice uh, we got the contract signed while we were on a cruise oh um, really Nice. Yeah, yeah. So we had went to that seminar and then we had a cruise booked, but in, in the time between, uh, we were just making calls, just calling Fizbo's off of Zillow because I was, you know, we'd already put all what little bit of money we had into the seminar and training. So we had to do free marketing at the time and it was just pick up the phone and call people who are trying to sell their property. Yep. Dial, dial, dial. Um, So that was our first deal. um, We received a $12,000 non-refundable option deposit up front. We were getting $400 a month residual income. And we put a tenant buyer in that property um, on a two-year rent to own. She didn't exercise her option to buy when her two years was up. So uh, we turned it into an Airbnb and where we were getting four hundred dollars a month residual income, we now get about three grand residual income. Wow, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and and we had fifteen year terms on it, so we're just gonna hold on to it and and to the wheels fall mm-hmm. off. Yeah, seriously, man, <laughs> that's super awesome. So yeah, you you never done a deal, and and most people would call that a home run. I mean, now it's giving you three thousand a month income. That's that's freaking awesome. So. Obviously, from there, you start to be like, wow, we can do this, right? I'm assuming you're like, we're all in. Like, if we can do it one time, we can do it again. We've got 12 grand, 400 months cash flow plus, and then it eventually turned into 3,000 a month. That's just crazy. So what do you feel like you learned doing that first deal? 
Like, what do you think you learned in order to catapult you into, mm-hmm. I'm assuming you do this full time now? Yes. Yes. So we do it full time now. Um, again, just to, to reiterate what you just mentioned, what we, what we learned was that, oh, we can do this. Um, <laughs> like that was that, that $12,000 non-refundable option deposit was our shut up check. Yeah. It was like for all the doubt that we may have been going through or anybody else that, you know, was like, y'all are crazy. You lost your mind. You better keep your job, things of that nature. Um, that was what we call a shut up check. And what we learned was, yeah, we can we can actually do this and we can do it together. Um, wow. My wife and I, we're, we're like probably rare. And I say that in terms of our relationship together, we're just really cool. We do everything together. Um, like I had bought a, a real fast, I had bought a, um, a street bike one time and I rode it like twice and realized like, she's never going to get on the back of it. And we, everywhere we go, we go together. Yeah. So it was like, I sold the bike. It was like, no need yeah. to have it. <laughs> I mean, it's just, so I said that to say we worked really well together. And after that first deal, it taught us that we can pull together and do this together and, uh, and do it over and over again. Yeah, that is awesome. So we have a lot of, there's, there's a lot of people in this industry that are husband and wife teams. I I don't know what it is, but I think it's just a natural, like, I I, I think sometimes one of the spouses are really good at the sales side and maybe the other one's more good at the numbers operations. I don't know if that's how you guys are, but what, what would you say has helped you guys see success working as a couple? Working as a couple, um, for the most part, excuse me, would be, we know each other's strengths and weaknesses when it comes to the business. So it's like, we're, it's just like you just mentioned where I'm stronger with looking at repair costs and things like that because I worked in construction building yeah. houses. Mm-hmm. She's very good with all the legalities and documentations, contracts, and, and just really multitasking when it comes to making sure all the ducks are lined up. Um, so that's what I would say working together. Um, we, we feel the, the, the void that one of us lack in. Yeah, that's awesome. I think that's, that can be super powerful. One, um, if you can have two people and you're both focusing on your strengths, obviously you can see twice the amount of results, um, compared to just one person, even if you're doing, bringing in a business partner, it's, it's probably a good way to, to increase your business. If you want to, um, you focus on your strengths, get really, really good at that. And then if you need someone else to do the things you're not so good at, um, there's kind of the rule of thumb. If you can, uh, if you can't, if you can, if someone else can do something as well as you, um, by 80%. So if somebody, someone else can do something as well as you 80%, then it should be, someone else should do it. Or if they can do hundred percent better than you, they should definitely be doing it. And so yeah. <laughs> uh, growing a business is, um, you definitely have an advantage being a husband and wife team because one, you don't have to pay any more people. Uh, it's just you guys, you're all in. Um, and you're already going to be sharing that income because, because you're married. So, um, that, that's really exciting or not married, but you you have a spouse. So, um, very, very cool. Cool. So let's jump forward a little bit. Let's talk about your most recent deal. Um, what, so what, what deal, I know you have a deal under contract right now working with Amplify. Do you have any other deals in the works right now? Uh, yes, we actually have a fix and flip that is um, currently going on in Portsmouth, Virginia. Um, it was originally, it was going to be a wholesale deal and we got it on the contract for X amount. And with, with the initial conversation with the seller, um, he said he only had like a $3,000 lien on the property and it was an HOA due. So it was like, okay, we'll we'll kick out three three thousand mm-hmm. extra more dollars to get the deal to lock the deal up. Mm-hmm. So uh, once they pulled title, he had six liens. Oh wow! And <laughs> yeah, so he had he ended up having like six different judgments on his title. It, it was another like twenty grand. So it was oh, like, wow. all right, well, you know, this isn't what we agreed to. This changes everything. So he was like, um, and you know, mind you, it's already under contract. So he says, um, all right, well, um, I'll do what I can to try to pay him off as soon as possible. And I'll, and I'll let you know when, when, when we, when I do that. 
And we were like, mm, yeah, that, that's that's not gonna work for us. We yeah. we got a contract to buy this house. We're gonna buy this house. <laughs> we're not gonna wait around for you to pay off. For sure, that, for sure. We haven't paid off in the past ten years to begin with. You know. Yeah, what's well, gonna change in the le- next thirty days? <laughs> yeah. So fortunately for us, um, again, man, just being able to do creative strategies, we looked at the numbers, ran the numbers, and we we're like, all right. Well, we can, if, he'll, if, you know, if you'll agree to sign it subject to, we'll take over your mortgage. So um, my wife, Winona, she, she jumped on the phones and started calling all of the lien holders and got a few of them forgiven. So quite a few of them forgiven. And then, um, you know, the other ones will get paid off when we go to close. So we turned it into a, a, a subject to deal. And then we're, we're going to renovate the property and put it on the market. Nice. Awesome. Well, congratulations. That's, that's, it is amazing what you can do when you open your mind beyond just the wholesale and fix and flip, right? Because that deal would have never existed if you didn't understand how to do creative financing, right? Most investors would have just walked away, just called it quits. Like, oh, freak, there's too much, too much here. I can't, unless they can come down 50 more on the the, um, original um, selling price, then I can't do the deal. But you guys come back, you figure out a creative way and now you're going to, I don't know what you'll end up profiting on, but I'm sure it'll be a really great deal for you. So yeah. um, that's, that's a huge lesson to anybody that watches or, or listens to this, like creative financing is the future. Um, it really is. And especially in such a hot market right now, um, we helped host a creative real estate live event back in um, May. And it was just amazing you know, to hear all the different exit strategies that you can do anything from sub to lease options, seller carry back, um, whether you're just doing long-term notes, whatever it is, it opens up your world to so many more. On average, people close an extra two to five more deals um, a month if they're using creative real estate compared to just your wholesaler or flipper, right? So on top of that, you're making more money, you're closing more deals and your acquisition cost is going to be going down per deal because you can close more with less leads. So anyways, uh, I love it. I, I love hearing you're doing creative financing. So what about this deal you're working with Amplify? I know it's just under contract right now, but would you mind just sharing some, some of the more details around that one? Oh yeah, sure. Um, so, you know, and how Ampl- you obviously know how Amplify works. The lead came in. So I got on the phone and I called the seller. Um, initially, um, she wanted more than you know I, I, I could pay, um, mm-hmm. and this was going to be a, a wholesale deal. Um, and I let her know, I'm, you know, this these numbers don't really work for us. And I offer terms. Have you thought about selling it on terms? So of course that reels them in to ask, you know, what does that look like? So I explained it to her. She said, Well, no. Um, how do I know I can trust you? How do I know you'll pay the mortgage? And she had a few rebuttals um, and from doing this and the experience that we have in doing this, um, I was able to, to talk her through those rebuttals, but she was like, well, I, I, no, nah, I'm not interested. I just want to, you know, cash out. I said, well, I understand if there's anything else we can do, you know, you have our number, we'll, you know, stay in touch. She um, ends up back in my system. Like, I guess she went back online she to like try to find somebody out. else. Okay. Yeah. So, and I, it's so funny because initially I didn't even put two and two together that it was the same person. Again, I, I get the lead. I called her. And, um, and then when I looked at the address and I started here, you know, I started putting, I was like, this is the same woman I've already talked to. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. I didn't tell her I'd already talked to her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, all right, you, you're obviously motivated. You're just waiting to find the right number. And that's, that's great. I don't blame you at all for that. But um, so I talked to her again. I said, well, listen, you know, due to the amount of, of, of work that, that needs to be done with your, with your property, I really can't come up to that, all, you know, to that, that price point. Is there any way you can work with me and come down a little bit? Is that the best you can do? And she was like, well, we really want to make such and such amount. I said, okay, well, I understand that. And of course, just, you know, kind of conversating with her. um, She said, well, let me, let me talk to my husband. I was like, okay, great. 
Um, I'm going to back up a little bit real fast. I had missed her call. Um, okay. And I had missed her call. The last one of the last conversations was, well, I'm not sure if I can trust you and, and whatnot. And I said, OK, well, you know, give us a call back. And she when she called, I missed it. And I called her right back. Um, I had actually tried to hit, you know, accept the call right when it went to voicemail. Mm. So I, as soon as it, I, I, I called right back and I said, hi, um, I'm sorry I missed your call. I was checking on the cheesecake in the oven. And she, she laughed. She was like, cheesecake? I said, yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm baking a cheesecake. We're new in the neighborhood. And my wife thought it would be a great idea to give the neighbors a slice of cheesecake. I said, so now I'm stuck baking the cheesecake and I don't know where my wife is at. So she just laughed. She said, oh, I love cheesecake. I said, yeah, we think everybody you know, loves cheesecake. <laughs> and, and she went from like night to day from the first couple of conversations I went, you know, I had with her where she was kind of short or crass or a little bit, you know, mm -hmm rough around the edges so to speak to this really gentle kind soul who told me her whole life story so that call got long and i didn't even say two more words wow. <laughs> so um, i had negotiated terms with her a couple days later i'm following up with her to get the contract to find out why the contract hadn't been signed i, I sent it via email um, like a, a docu sign through our CRM. Anyways, um, and her husband calls me back and says she's in the hospital. Oh man! So all negotiations and all the discussions would go through me now. And I'm like, okay, great. And it was my understanding she had talked to him. He acted brand new about the whole. Like, oh, he talked to her. <laughs> he acted like he didn't know none of it. Now he's starting back at a number up here, and so I said, well. I'll be in town. I'm going to visit my grandmother next week. I'll be in town. Is it okay if I come see the property and give you a, a you know, bring my contractor by there, walk through the property and give you a, a realistic number and go from there? He said, that'd be fine. So that's what I did. I, um, <clears throat> I went by there, took my contractor. We walked through the property. I said, listen, this, this property, you know, it needs some extensive amount of work. I said, and I understand. He said, well, he went from 15, they need at least $15,000 to walk away with. And I said, okay, great. I said, well, if you give us terms, then I might be able to get you that. I said, but um, I can't give you a cash. I can't cash you out all at one time, you know, and, and you get $15,000. It's just not going to work with the, with the amount of work this property needs. So I said, um, he said, uh, well, what would the terms look like? So I, I broke it down to him, same numbers I had already discussed with his wife. He says, well, I really don't want to keep the mortgage in my name. I said, well, I understand that. Um, and so we kind of talked back and forth. He said, well, well, let me think about it and I'll get back with you. I said, well, honestly, you know, what, what more, I'm not, I, I can't, you know, make you do something you don't want to do. You, you're not going to get another offer that's going to put any more money in your pocket. And I, and I, I come to find out later on, he had already be, been getting other offers that were way under what I was offering him to begin with. Mm. So anyways, I ended up before I left there, he agreed to take $5,000 as opposed to $15,000 nice. down to just $5,000, pay off the mortgage and give, put $5,000 in pocket. So that worked for us. And um, so as soon as we close, that will be another fix and flip. Nice. Wow. Wow. What a story. Goodness. That has so many layers. That's crazy. <laughs> so you guys hopefully will close on that next month, right? Yeah. 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 We're looking to close on that next month. And um, like I said, it'll be another fix and flip. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, what I'm learning just in this brief conversation about you, Justin, is that to you, everything's figure outable, right? Like if, if you, if, if the seller will talk, you'll figure it out a solution, right? And, and you're also tenacious, meaning you're not going to give up just because there's, it's complicated, I guess you could say, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, you know, I got to give credit where credit's due. And a lot of people um, can learn from that because in the wholesaling world, it's just like, hey, 60 cents on the dollar. If you don't accept it, all right, you don't accept it. On to the next one. It, it's really just like, boom, boom, boom. But 
to you, and this is a common trend we see amongst people we bring on the show, those that are willing to build rapport and find solutions, close more and make more money. It's just, it's just what it is. We're in a solution focused people business. And it happens to be, we're dealing with their biggest and most heavy investment they've ever made in their life, their home. And so if, if you can't find creative solutions and build awesome rapport, then you're just going to keep falling short. So I, I just want to give you credit because that, that, that takes a lot of effort, a lot of time, but also just a lot of mental grit. So um, good work. <laughs> Thank you. So, and it was, um, you know, uh, for us, it's, uh, it's a, some certain things are assumed. And um, for example, that same seller, he was like, he, he really didn't want me to see the house hmm. because it looked like a hoarder's place. Yeah. Every room was filled like floor to ceiling with just bags of clothes, yeah. but it had zero smell. So they weren't nasty. They just had a lot of stuff. Hmm. For whatever reason, um, he said that her parents had lived there and they died and they just had all the property still there. But he was like, please excuse all this stuff. And that's what he said. You know, her, her parents were living here and they've passed away. And I was like, listen, this is nothing. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, this is a lot. I'm like, mm, you don't understand. I've, we've had to watch where we step so we don't step in feces. This yep. is not bad at all. <laughs> yeah. So he was like, well, I said, and don't worry about it. We'll take care of all this. He was like, what? I said, um, you don't have, I mean, you can pack a suitcase if that's what you want and, and leave. If, you know, we come to an agreement, you don't have to worry about any of this. And he go, he looked at me, he says, well, that's, that's a sales pitch for you because um, nobody else has offered to move any of this stuff. He mm -hmm. said, I can come down on my price if you're willing to get rid of all the stuff. I mm -hmm. said, no, it'll be our pleasure. You can literally walk out of here with the clothes that's on your back if you don't want to take nothing else. Yeah, wow. So so he had a real estate problem, not necessarily a cash problem, right? Mm -hmm. So his, his problem was he had the property with a whole bunch of stuff in it and he didn't want to have to deal with it anymore. And you were able to solve that real estate pro that real estate problem, not just the cash problem. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. So real quick, would you mind just telling us a little bit about how your experience has been with Amplify? Just super transparent, honest. Um, you've obviously had one deal go under contract. We haven't been working together for super long, but I'd just love to know how has your experience been working with us here at Amplify so far? Oh, it's, it's incredible. Like hands down, I prefer it. Like I love it. Um, the experience has been, uh, it, it, incredible. Like, I don't, I don't know how else to say it. It's, it's automation, which everybody loves, you mm -hmm. know, um, it's very, very, um, helpful. Like all the communication, all the support, like every day it's, um, it's, it's incredible. Like, and, and, Honestly, it was something I was just going to try out. Like, yeah. it's like I'll, I'll give it a shot. I need some, you know, I want some warm leads coming in. I need inbound leads coming in. Things are changing. Um, the cost of marketing is, is, the cost of everything is getting ridiculous, but the cost of marketing is, so it was like, let me give this a shot, see how this goes. And um, no, but it's done wonders just for the steady lead flow and the, the constant follow-up. And anybody in this business knows that, the the money is made in the follow-up mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah love it well awesome we appreciate it. we've really enjoyed working with you justin we're super excited for the many more deals to come your way um we know that with with your persistence and, and creative options that uh, you're going to just be closing deals left and right here soon so um wh what advice would you give to a brand new investor just getting started so let's say you know you're talking to yourself x amount of years ago it's this guy at the construction site who keeps coming up to you and just asking you questions. What advice would you give to a brand new invest investor just getting started? Um, unsubscribe from every, you know, guru, YouTube and Facebook group. Find one that you resonate with and stick to what they say to a T and and really really focus and block out all the distractions mm. um if not you'll you'll contain you'll continue to spin your wheels trying to do 10 different 
things when you never you're never spending enough time focusing on one yeah that's awesome that's really powerful and really simply it is mastery versus information overload that's what you're talking about it's mastery versus information overload get the very best at one thing and people will find you right yeah. and if you can provide yeah. overwhelming value and get really good at that one thing you've mastered it, then you can add another thing. So get really, really good at sales or get really, really good at creating creative finance options with sub two, whatever it is. And only hear from those. That's, that's really, really awesome advice. So awesome. Justin, well, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time. Um, we're excited to be able to, to share this with people because I think there's a lot they can learn um, from you. So thanks again for hopping on. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you guys. Awesome.